Our movie opens with the performance of Power Rangers on stage and it's being recorded when two kids run out of the showroom, leading us outside where a bunch of guys were chatting about the famous pop idol group Cham and we then see a guy selling a magazine with these idols on the cover. As we follow him, we notice that a lot of the people were talking about this group, especially Mima. In the next scene, we see the group of pop idols frantically preparing for their concert and as they step onto the stage, a big crowd excitedly awaits them and they start performing. Everyone is cheering and dancing as they sing, except for a group of guys who entered the concert solely to cause disturbance. The scene then cuts to an argument between their manager and former pop idol Rumi Hidika and her agent Tadokoro, and Tadokoro argues that Mimi should quit singing and pursue a career as a full-time actress. Rumi angrily disagrees, believing that Mima can do both things at the same time. We then get back to the concert where Mima Nia, a security guard with a creepy appearance, has opened his hand and placed it in front of him to visualize Mima dancing on his palm. He's distracted by a can thrown at Mima from the crowd and she dodges it and keeps singing. Mima Nia locates and approaches the guys who threw the can and have been disturbing all along when Mima and her partner stop singing to make an announcement. As they start talking, they're interrupted by a fight between Mima Nia and the guys, which then escalates into a fight between the whole crowd. In the midst of this noisy chaos, Mima yells at the crowd, insisting that they stop to listen to her and the group of guys leaves ranting and the crowd goes silent and when Mima stutters to announce her retirement from singing, her partner does it for her. She tells the crowd that it's Mima's last performance, to which Mima continues explaining. She expresses her gratitude and how she hopes to entertain her fans as an actress just the same. After the concert, as Mima leaves for her house, she receives letters from her fans who surround her car. Just before she enters the car, she hears someone in the crowd saying that they're always watching Mima's room. It was already dark when she got home and she starts filling her bath and feeds her fish. While lying on her bed, she sees a poster of what now is her former pipe idol group on her wall. She gets up and takes it off and collects all other stuff related to her singing career and throws it inside a bag. She then sits down to read the letters that she'd received earlier and she's a bit bothered to read a letter that says that the writer enjoys watching her in her room and that they put up a link to Mima's room. When she stares at her window, which has its curtains widely opened, she gets interrupted by a phone call from her mom. She doesn't seem to be happy to hear that Mima had made a career switch and as Mima tries to explain why her decision was right, another phone call interrupts her and she picks it up but only hears someone breathing. She then gets back to her mom but then gets interrupted again by the bath alarm. When she goes to close the tub, she hears her phone ring again and when she complains about her mother not being patient, she receives an anonymous fax calling her a traitor. The next morning, Mima is practicing her lines for her first project, a direct to video Video series called Double Blind and she hands the suspicious letter to Rumi and asks what she thinks of it and Rumi tells her that by putting up a link to Mima's room, they mean that they've created a website called Mima's Room. Because the internet wasn't popular at the time, Mima fails to understand this and gets back to work. She admirably watches Eerie, the lead in the series, until it was time to record her scene. She gets to the set and repeats her lines over and over again to practice, and as they were getting ready to record, the fan letter that had been brought from Mima and given to Tadokoro explodes in his hand. Days later, we see Rumi setting up a computer for Mima, and Mima expresses her concern about what happened with the letter days ago, but Rumi brushes it off and tells her that since she wasn't hurt, she should just let it go. Later, Later, Mima, who now has her computer set up, looks up the link from the letter and she finds a website that seems to be a blog written from her perspective. At first, she enjoys reading all about herself and laughs, claiming that whoever wrote it must know her very well. This goes on until she finds that the information written is suspiciously too personal and the next day, she gets back to making the movie. Wait, hold on. Did you subscribe to our channel? Come on guys, you're here, you're watching the video, help us out by hitting the subscribe button as it really helps out me and my team to make more videos for you guys. And now, let's get back to the recap. And we cut to the scene where Rumi was discussing the smallness of Mima's scenes in the movie with Tadakoro, and Tadakoro with both his hands covered in bandages expresses how difficult it is to get a reoccurring role in a series. Rumi seems to be stuck on reintroducing her as a pop idol, and he convinces her by explaining how it's more challenging for pop artists 
artists to succeed now than actors. Immediately after this, they discover that Cham has been flourishing when they see them listed as one of the top 100 in a magazine. While on her way to work, Mima feels paranoid and is conscious of everyone near her in the train. When she reaches her stop, she runs out panicking and calms down as she reaches Rumi's office. She sees Mima Nia staring at her from a distance as the elevator closes and she discovers that Cham has released a new single that happened to become really popular. She then overhears Tadakoro say that Cham has been doing great as a duo. As she does an outdoor scene, we see Mima Mina recording on her camera. We then see the scriptwriter and the producer talk over the phone about the new script. And the scriptwriter expresses his doubt about Mima's capability of handling it. A week later, Mima was reading the script, but when Rumi yells that Mima shouldn't do a grape scene, Tadokoro disagrees and Mima interrupts them, saying that she will do it, claiming that it won't affect her as long as they don't actually do it to her. Afterwards, Mima was on the train going back home when she sees her own reflection wearing an outfit that she had worn at her concert. She had a worried expression when she exclaims that she absolutely doesn't want to do it and then disappears. Next we see Mima getting ready to do the scene, and people surrounding her look at her in a strange way, making her feel uneasy. When they start shooting the scene, Mima starts stripping as the customers cheer, and the customers try to grape her, and as she and the owner of the strip club and Mima fight the customers, Rumi and Tadokoro watch disappointedly. The scene continues to her being forced to the ground and graped, and she recalls a crowd cheering for her, and she stares at the ceiling lights crying and trying to fight back. Afterwards, she heads home, exhausted from work, and when she gets there, she tries to feed her fish and finds them dead. She is devastated as she had already had a bad day at work, and she cries hysterically and admits that she doesn't want to do the scene. She then sees her pop idol self reflected on her computer screen, and at this time, she giggles and tells her reflection that she was right all along and that she is now on the wrong path. Mima throws her pillow at her computer and her reflection turns back to normal, and when she turns to her fish, she sees that they are actually alive and she realizes that she's been hallucinating. We then see Mima being interviewed about the movie, and she admits that she has hesitations doing the scenes, but saw it as a hurdle that she had to get through. We then cut to the scene where Mima was in her apartment, reading the blog that's supposedly hers. The writer, who's pretending to be her, has written about how she was forced to do such scenes in the movie, and she yells that she didn't write it, and the pop idol Mima appears on her screen again and tells her that the real Mima wrote it. She insults her and tells her that she's tarnished her reputation and that she cannot be a pop idol anymore, and Mima becomes very disturbed when she comes out of the computer and tells her that she's filthy just before flying out of her window. The next morning, the scriptwriter was at the parking lot when he finds a paper with double blind written on it covered in blood. When he gets out of his car, he hears Mima's song playing in the elevator and we then see his eyes gouged out with blood all over the elevator and when he reaches the fifth floor, the elevator opens. After hearing the news, Mima talks with Tadukoro in his car about how she thinks that the letter that exploded and the murder might be connected. He tells her not to be delusional and just move on, and when she looks out of the window, she sees her pop idol self in another car passing by, telling her serves you right. We then see Mima in a photo shoot where the photographer gradually gets her to take off all of her clothes, and she experiences another hallucination where she talks to her pop idol self again, and her pop idol self keeps on telling her that she's replacing her and will go out to perform with Cham. Nude pictures of Mima are printed in a magazine and distributed, and Mima Nia, upset because of this, buys all the magazines near him to prevent people from seeing them. We then see him exchanging text messages with an anonymous person who's pretending to be Mima. The imposter claims that the Mima in the magazines is a fake one and further explains that she's been causing trouble for the real Mima, and Mima Nia is entrusted with taking care of her. In the next scene, we see Mima heading to a radio station to greet her former partner who were doing a podcast. She gets excited to see them until she sees her pop idol self in the room with them and she follows and chases this mysterious illusion outside the building and onto the streets until a bus almost hits her. But then she wakes up and discovers that it was just all a dream. Afterwards, she has a conversation with Rumi and confesses that she thinks that the pop idol Mima might be more like her than she is. When Rumi gives her a pat on the back and tells her that illusions can't come to life, we immediately cut to a scene where 
where Eerie says the exact same thing to her on set. She wakes up again to realize that it was all a dream, and Rumi arrives at her house again, and Mima, who now has her reality distorted, can distinguish what's real or not. The cameraman that had taken nude pictures of her was watching the show that she was in when the pizza he ordered arrives. The person disguised as a delivery guy is Mima. She drops the pizza box and stabs him multiple times when he bends down to pick it up, and the stabbing goes on as she remembers the photo shoot and the pictures that he had taken of her. She wakes up startled again to learn that it was all a dream, and as she was still in deep shock, her agent calls to inform her that the photographer had actually died. When she opens her closet, she finds the clothes she was wearing in her dreams soaked in blood. Later at work, Mima, who was sitting near Rumi, overhears everyone chatting about the murder. Uncertain about everything, she questions whether she's alive or not, and in a very surreal shoot, Mima acts as if she committed a murder. She becomes distressed, seeing the dead person's face transform into the photographer's, and suddenly she wakes up, finding Eerie by her side. Eerie asks her about her profession, and Mima replies that she is now an actress. Other actors observe their conversations, intrigued by her confession. Eri reveals that Mima has dissociative identity disorder, but in the movie, Mima's character claims to be a model. It becomes evident that she struggles to tell the difference between reality from the film, and the scene concludes the shooting for the movie. As Mima goes to get changed alone and leave the place, Mima Mina, who now thinks that she's an imposter, admits that he's responsible for the former murders and tries to grape and kill her. When he was ripping her undergarments, Mima Mima finds a hammer nearby and hits his head with it, and he falls at the exact position as the actor playing dead did earlier, and she breathes heavily with shock and sees the set lights shine on her and the crew applauding. On their way home, Ruby tells Mima that they're going back to Mima's room, and Mima falls asleep in the car and wakes up on her bed, realizing that she's not in her room, but in the room that she had as a pop idol. She's shocked to see the poster of Cham, which she had thrown away, back on her wall. Her pop idol self then appears and tells her that it's Mima's room, and as Mima talks to her reflection in the mirror, she sees Rumi wearing a pop idol outfit. When she confronts her about it, the imposter denies being Rumi and claims that Rumi had gone home. She then tries to kill Mima by stabbing her in the chest, but Mima manages to escape, and the chase continues around the city, and Rumi stabs Mima again. However, Mima takes off her wig and throws it, causing Rumi to fall on shattered glass and get injured. Rumi walks away from Mima and onto the streets, where she sees a truck approaching. Mistaking the lights for stage lights, she waits for it with open arms, but Mima saves her just in time. This marks the end of Mima's paranoia and hallucinations, and the movie ends with Mima visiting Rumi in a mental hospital. The doctor explains that Rumi sees herself as Mima, but returns to her Rumi personality occasionally. The nurses see Mima and say that she might be a look-alike, to which Mima replies, no, I'm the real thing, after entering her car. I hope you guys enjoyed the recap, make sure to leave me a like, leave a comment, also subscribe to my channel, I love you guys so much and I promise to see you on my next recap, bye!